Welcome back to another edition of Between Two Fars. I'm Warnicky Miller, and I'm here once again with Andrew Falcon. He is the chief counsel at Goddard Space Flight Facility, and he's been there as chief counsel since 2012, although he spent most of his 30 year career working here at NASA. Now we're going to be talking a little bit more today about an attorney's role in risk management. Today's, today's episode focuses specifically on how we treat our legal review thresholds for procurement actions and the role that risk management should be taking in that thought process. Andrew, how do we handle legal review thresholds now? What, what are some of the considerations that we look to when deciding what the legal review threshold will be? Well, it's very much in flux, I would say, um, particularly here at Goddard. What we've we've maybe gotten out a little bit ahead of um, everybody else in terms, you know, certainly the Office of Procurement, in terms of just revisiting our thresholds and um, at my initiative, doing things that I don't want to do uh, is the way I would put it, right? I mean, I have always defended ha keeping, you know, the thresholds at a fairly modest level. Um, really because I just don't see dollar value as being a good proxy for risk um, or for that matter workload. I mean, um, I've put a lot more effort into, you know, $100,000 claims than into $8 billion cost plus award fee program procurements, right? I mean, so there's a lot of reason why you want to have that ability to get in early, you know, stitch in time saves nine. That's the, the, you know, that's preventive law. And, and at the end of the day, that's always been the tension is can we do enough preventive law? And we never do as much as we'd like. And I think we're kind of in a place where we have to accept we're going to be doing less. So where that's led me to is just not, is just being willing to um, turn my back on 28 years of strongly held feelings and raise our review thresholds. Well, what's, what is pushing that shift? What's going oh. on right now? Um, you know, that's, uh, you know, right now, I mean, we're, we're down one. We've been down one since, um, you know, basically April of 20. And I, and I don't see that changing. Uh, meanwhile, we've got a lot of additional work because, you know, enterprise governance and all that sort of thing, right? And um, so in practical terms, we just had to take a good hard look at, at the amount of uh, care and feeding we were providing early in the process. So like, we're doing almost no pre-PSM support anymore. Um, you know, um, basically, you know, once we approve the approach, we're not looking at all their DNFs because, you know, there's just not a lot of risk there, right? And the PSMs themselves, are, they're kind of orchestrated at this point. There shouldn't be any big issues coming up. Now, by special requests, will we look at an issue or will we support a meeting? Of course we will, right? You know, but in terms of the routine stuff, no. Same thing with the review thresholds. On some level, this makes me more, a lot more nervous, frankly, than the early stages of a procurement. Um, because at some point, you know, we're just going to have to make that fundamental decision about where do we want to spend our bandwidth. Um, and to me, I feel really strongly that we have to continue doing excellent legal work on everything we do. I think it's the most important thing and we have to be just clear and distinct when <laughs> we'll do this and we'll do this and we'll do this and we'll do them all really well. And when we get to this, if we're if we don't have the time, we're not going to pencil whip a file through the system just because somebody wants to see a lawyer's initial on a route sheet um, because that's how the train runs off the tracks. Um, so to me, it's very important that we just draw a line and say, nope, we don't have the resources to review all the stuff that you want us to review. Um, rather than put people in the difficult position of having too much work and too little time and not doing as thorough a job as we would have traditionally expected. That is a, a difficult position to be in to be able to push back on the clients and the programs in that way. Um, so it sounds to me that currently the actual dollar value thresholds are being pushed based on bandwidth issues, based on workforce workload type issues, as opposed to considerations of risk. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Yeah. So, so before I, I get to that, you said something really important a second ago, which is, you know, the difficulty of pushing back on the client, right? And this is why I want to formalize it. This is really the main reason that I'm picking on things like risk, like review thresholds. It is a clear line that you can draw. 
right? So then it's my job to go push back on procurement and, and they weren't super happy about it and say, you know, yeah, we're just not gonna provide that support anymore. Um, as opposed to leaving it up to the individual attorneys or even individual supervisors, but in a, a, a you know case by case context. I'd rather draw the bright lines. I'd rather decide what work is low value and institutionalize that so that, you know, that we can just educate people um, so that that expectation goes away. I mean, how much non-legal work do you spend your time doing, Warnicky? Right, and you're laughing. I can tell it's a big number, right? I mean, we are, we just we're, we're better writers than most of our clients, and they've gotten used to using us as their copy editors, right? We're not going to do that no more. So, so you look at all those sorts of things and say, well, how do I how do I characterize that and draw a bright line? So that's what I'm trying to do is prevent exactly that issue that you were referring to, which is the difficulty of pushing back on the clients. I want to institutionalize it so that it's clear. Now, if we've got this threshold that says we're not looking at anything below this dollar value for this type of procurement. But if you have specific questions, feel free to contact us because we're always here to help you on those yes. unusual one offs. Of course. What happens when those unusual one offs start eating your lunch? <laughs> yeah, so um, the way we've set it up at Goddard, which may or may not be the best way, but this is the way we've done it, is they need to get special permission from me or Laura, you know, Laura Guys, the deputy, um, if they want to, it's not just on review thresholds, before a contracting officer can slap an urgent sticker on a package, they have to get Mike McGrath, the procurement officer, to call me, or Mary Stevens, his deputy, to call Laura. To, to work that out in advance, right? I mean, no more of this sort of everything's urgent kind of stuff, right? So we're trying to tackle this one by one and make it so that it's it's a little bit of work, right? In and that's order. excellent. That is actually a, a process we've had at JSC that's worked really well for a number of years so for these urgent turnaround requests. But I'm a little bit more worried about you know, we've cultivated some great relationships with our clients, and we always get those phone calls that say, hey, Warnicky, can I run something by you? And those are sometimes the things that are not on the list of review threshold items that you're supposed to be looking at for procurement work, but can eat up a lot of your time. It's valuable. It's, and, and, and these clients oftentimes do need the help, but how are we going to manage that, that risk versus legal review threshold with the aspect of workload bandwidth issues? I think that might be a cycle that's coming up that has no clear or easy answers. Uh, I love the concept of, hey, if you want it turned around in three days, you need an official request. But how about these coming in the back door requests? Hey, can I run this by you? Any yeah, advice so, for how attorneys can handle those? So, so if it's a phone call, I would always take the phone call, right? I mean, because we do have a, a client relationship to maintain there. If it's, you know, going to be a significant workload item if it if it is really you know circumventing one of our other guardrails if for example it is below the established threshold well okay maybe maybe we should still be looking at it but why and you know is it just you're trying to be helpful or is it because there's a good reason for it and you know I, th I think the important thing there is that's where management has to has to be involved um, just to, because we need to understand where everybody's workload is anyway right that's fundamentally a supervisor's job is to manage workload but it's also important for us to understand if the client is you know getting with the program and there's some important issues that need to be treated individually or whether it's all just become a big fandango um, and because we know it will become a big fandango if we're not careful, right? <laughs> so, so that's that's my my answer. It's, yeah, if it's a phone call. Of course, you're gonna take a phone call. Why wouldn't you talk to your clients? You know, but if yeah. it's gonna be, oh, now I have to write a memo or I have to review something or whatever else, right? That's a fantastic rule of thumb. Thank you. Yeah, take the phone calls. But if they're inviting you to a meeting, asking you for a product a document or something like that, it's time to send them to the main desk for assignment to an attorney or to get it in the system as appropriate yes. work. And that raises another issue, right? We're, it's very important that we be able to track our work better than we have in the past too. I mean, I don't know that anything I've done in the last 10 years has actually been logged in, right? I get emails <laughs> and I respond to them. I go to meetings, I do whatever. That Nobody has any idea what I do, and yet I seem to fill them up my weeks, right? So in in practical terms, again, how do we manage that? You know, well, the only way we can really manage it is if we know about it. 
What an excellent point. Thank you so much for taking your time to talk with us today about legal review thresholds and risk management. Now we're going to continue to talk to Andrew a little bit more in this series. So join us again next time on Between Two Fars as we dig a little bit deeper into the attorney's role in the risk management of our workload. Join us again next time, Between Two Fars. <laughs>